right. Welcome to the Wimbledon 2023 preview show on the Slice. We are approaching the hallowed grounds of SW19. People say it's the height of the tennis calendar. I would agree. The biggest tournament, the best tournament is about to go down. And the real question on the men's side is, can anyone trouble? Can anyone even inconvenience? Can anyone make him break a sweat? And yes, of course, we're talking about Novak Djokovic, who is going through his for his eighth Wimbledon, 24th major title. Just incredible. We're looking at the contenders. Are there any or are they all pretenders? We've got Carlos Alcaraz winning in Queens. We've got Zverev. We've got Medvedev. We've got Sinner. We've got Tsitsipas, who's more interested in you know his new girlfriend. So we're going to we're going to ask the question who are the contenders if there are any and who are the pretenders who might become contenders based on the draw. So we're going to break down the draws. We're going to look at the women's. We're going to ask the question who's who's the real favorite? Rybakina, Sviantek, Sabalenka. It seems like a three woman race, is it? So we're going to break it all down here. We're going to I've got my notes on the draws, etc. We've got it all here on the slice. So thanks for being here. I'm excited to hear your opinions in the comment section down below and I'm excited to give my predictions at the end of the show. So don't go anywhere. Thanks for being here and let's get into it. All right, back at Wimbledon, the grass, the prestige, the flops. It's going to be a great tournament. I cannot wait to get the action started. We've got uh, um, what is it, Eastbourne finishing up right now. We've got Mallorca finishing up right now. Um, and yeah, players are you know trying to get in shape. Like I said, to try and inconvenience Novak Djokovic, who basically just came back from the vacation and you know showed up at the Armani tournament there, chopped up Francis Tiafo, felt you know got his feet under him on the grass, and uh, now he's ready to go. I'm sure. So our sponsors for this year. At Wimbledon, cool bet. Stay cool, bet responsibly. Let's take a look at the odds, outright odds to win. Well, starting with the women, they don't know. They know they've got no clue. They got Sriantek at five point one five, Rubikina at five point five, Sabalenka at six to one to win. So basically, the three of them are almost the same with odds. And then like Kvitova fourth at fifteen to one, Coco Goff at nineteen to one, and Jabir. 21 to 1. So really, it's three-woman race, like we said. On the men's side, it's a lot more clear. Novak Djokovic, 1.75 times your money to win. Almost zero value there. But, I mean, honestly, you could 75% of, of your bet. You could, and it's, uh, I, would say it's a, I would say it's a pretty safe bet. And then they got Alcaraz next at 5.25. Then they got Mevit of 18 to 1. So they're really saying it's like a two, two-person race, which, honestly, pretty fair. Yannick Sinner at 19. Kyrgios 25, Zverev 26, Fritz 28. But honestly, they have there is a a lot of players that are way down the uh, way down the the line there for the men's tournament outrights, which is pretty interesting. Take a look at this. They got Felix Auger-Aliassime at 45 to one. They got Sitsipas at 41 to one. Like they got Korda, Murray, Runa all ahead of Sitsipas. So. That's pretty interesting. Anyways, huge shout out to CoolBet. Also, shout out to AG1, our official nutritional drink of the slice, which keeps me healthy, gives me a baseline of nutrition every morning, and it's a great, easy, healthy habit. So check out the link below to start your own and get a free gift. And shout out to Go Sport, the official premium tennis bag of the slice. They got a new bag dropping. Check out the link to the website below. Thank you, sponsors. Make it happen. Carlos Alcaraz making it happen on the grass as well. Wins Queens. Is he a pretender? Anyways, let's break it down. Contenders versus pretenders. Contender, obviously Djokovic. Yeah, he's the defending champ, the four-time defending champ uh, in a row, going for five in a row uh, to match J Federer's record there, five or you know Federer's number of five in a row and eight Wimbledon titles. So yes, he's the obvious contender. Would I categorize Alcaraz as a contender? I have him here on my board as an honorable mention. HM, honorable mention. Right there. Because, yes, 
he just won Queens, and I think that puts him into the contender category. I do think he's really figured out grass, as I talked about in the last video. You know, we had the Djokovic psychos faithful. You know who you are. Come out and say, you know, get mad that I was even saying that Alcaraz could potentially, um, you know, trouble Djokovic at Wimbledon. But is he a real contender? Like, he's the second best player, for sure. But has he gone deep in Wimbledon before? No. Is it different than a regular 250? Yes. But is Alcaraz now better at the slams than he is at smaller tournaments? I got to say yes. Who's Who in the field is gaining an advantage on Alcaraz by playing five sets? People are like, oh, he's going to cramp again. He, that was, again, I think a freak circumstance based on the nerves before that match, and I think a mistake with his hydration, for sure. So I wouldn't count on that. So I have him as an honorable mention contender, and then I got everyone else in the pretender category. For the men, not meaning that they couldn't become contenders, but based on the draw, that's what will determine it. So I, the pretenders, I got Medvedev. You know, Daniil Medvedev losing to players in Hertogenbosch, and uh, Queens, or sorry, Hala, where he played. I've got that. So he's like my third ranked player, though, because of the amazing season he has had. He has played well, and, you know, he should, in reality, play great on the grass with his serve. Then I've got Zverev, who, again, is playing pretty good. Played sneaky pretty good at Hala. Huge serve, obviously. He's starting to, you know, he's he's got a low ranking, and I think he's definitely a, a sleeper dark horse. Then I got Sitsipas, who again, I'm more interested in his girlfriend, has had actually, if you just look at the last 12 months, he has not won a title. He, in general, has just played like super bad. He's just had the worst last 12 months of his career by a long shot. So he's really, you know, not a contender on grass. Like he hasn't won a match. I think he lost in the first round in Mallorca <laughs> and uh, and in Hala. Let me just take, Let me just confirm that. He lost in yeah, so he was he was trying to have a grass season, loses in the first round to Gasquet in Stuttgart. In Halle, loses in the second round after barely squeaking by Barrera, loses in the second round to Nicholas Yeri, who is that's that's a tough matchup, to be fair. Tough player. And then he loses the Hanfman in three in Mayorka in the first round. So obviously Sitsipas is literally stone cold coming into Wimbledon. So it's hard for me to put him up there. Then we got center who you know, could do serious damage. I got him with Fritz kind of at the same level, but here's my actual power rankings coming into this tournament. Novak Djokovic by a lot. Carlitos Alcaraz, Daniel Medvedev, Zverev, Tsitsipas, Fritz, because he got deep last year, Sinner, Felix Auger seem Francis TFO, and I got Nick Kyrgios on there, even though he his body will probably fall apart in the first or second rounds, unfortunately, because he was the Wimbledon finalist last year, so... He's coming in as a seeded player. Anyways, let's get into the draw. Where are the players on the draw? Well, on the top, we've got Alcaraz as the number one seed. And some player people think that's ridiculous, but we got the top. We got who do we got on the top? We got Alcaraz, we've got Medvedev, we've got Sitsipas, and we've got Zverev. So if you've noticed. That's number two, three, four, five are all on the top of the power rankings. Number one, six. I don't know where Sinner is. Or, yeah, number one, six, seven, eight, and ten are on the bottom. So the top half is tougher, in my opinion. I mean, the bottom half is obviously tougher because they got Djokovic in it. But if we're just looking at Djokovic, Alcaraz, I think there's more dangerous players than the Alcaraz half of the draw, and we're going to get into their path to the final right now. So we got Djokovic. Let's take a look at Djokovic's path to the final. He will play Pablo Kachin in the first round, not notable. Thompson or Nakashima in the second round. Thompson has played good in the grass, but again, are we joking ourselves? That's not going to be close. He could play in the third round, Echeverry, the quarterfinalist from the French Open, or Wawrinka. Again, on grass at Wimbledon, no chance. Sorry. Fourth round is where it starts to get kind of interesting. Musetti or Hercatch, although either of those guys could easily lose before the first round. Very inconsistent, but 
We'll see. If, if one of them gets hot with their serve, more likely her catch. If he got really hot with his serve, he could do some damage. Um, you know, he is the man who bagged Roger Federer in this final set at Wimbledon. So he can play good on the grass, obviously. Um, so that could be an interesting fourth round. Then we got the quarterfinals where, you know, he should have a more tough challenge. He could potentially play Felix Auger L.A. Seam, Nick Kyrgios if his body doesn't fall apart, or Andre Rublev. So if, you know, Felix is really playing hot. I got him. You know, he's been injured. He's not, you know, had his body cooperating. If he plays well, he could be really interesting against Novak Djokovic on center court. But again, he could also get so nervous and lock up that he doesn't play his best. That's very likely. But he has played at these, that level of a slam before against Nadal. Played very well, um, obviously, at the French Open. And yeah, that would be interesting. Quarterfinals. Then in the semifinals, he'll either play Sinner or Fritz, most likely. Unless, again, either of those guys could lose well before that as well. So if they get there, they could both pose a pretty good match. But still, Djokovic, huge favorite to come out of the bottom half of the draw. And I would say his draw is pretty peachy. It's not too tough. Not too bad. But again, no draw would be that bad for him because of how good he is on the grass at Wimbledon. Let's be fair. Is that fair? Is that fair? I'd say that's fair. Let's look at Alcaraz. He's got a tougher draw. Plays Shardy in the first round. Then he'll play potentially Rindernetch in the second round. Then third round, scary upset alert, Nicholas Yari probably in the third round, who is hammering the ball. Huge serve, huge game, playing very confidently. Uh, he played great at the French on clay, and he's playing great already on Wimbledon. Like, let's just look up his results real quick here. He did lose to Barrer in the in the second round of Eastbourne. In Hala, though, he made the quarterfinals, lost to, to Zverev. So yeah, not maybe as good on the on the grass, but potentially very scary for Alcaraz in the third round. Fourth round, he could play Zverev or Berrettini or Demonauer. Again, tough for Alcaraz. We will see. That'll be a real challenge versus guys like all those guys have more experience. Like Berrettini, obviously finalist at, at Wimbledon before. Zverev, good on the grass. Demonauer who he just beat, but tough, tough fourth round. Then the quarterfinals, Tiafo, Runa, or Dimitrov, not getting easier. Semifinals, Medvedev or Sitsipas. So, you know, tough, tough for uh, young Carlitos Alcaraz, I would say. Uh, doable, but tough. It's just going to be a real challenge. So we will see how Carlos can perform at Wimbledon. That's a huge question mark and intrigue for me. Now let's just go through the draw from top to bottom because – we are in depth here. You got to be in depth. So this is the Holger Rune. Carlos Alcaraz is in the in his quarter. Is Holger Runa is the second highest seed, number six. And then you got Demonauer and TFO in there. And Dimitrov, Zverev, and Yari. So just a ton of talent and grass court potential in this top quarter. Obviously, first good first rounds out of here. Uh, just looking through it, Berrettini, Sanego, the Italian Stallions facing off. That's a that's a pretty good first match. Tiafo versus Yibing Wu. That's a actually scary match there for for Tiafo first up. And just looking through here, who else sticks out to you guys? That's about it for first round matches. So yeah, dark horse out of this uh, out of this quarter. I don't know if he's a dark horse, Tiafo. I would say Zverev, you know, because he's ranked 19. He's the guy who I actually could see coming out of this quarter. He could beat anyone here, in my opinion, on grass. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? Going down to the next quarter, the Danil Medvedev quarter has Stefano Tsitsipas in his quarter. We, I feel like we've seen that a lot lately. He's got lots of talent there. Tommy Paul, who's in the semifinals of Eastbourne. Cam Norrie, whose ranking has slid a bit, but maybe he's going to be a dark horse at Wimbledon. You never know. Sebastian Corda can play big on the grass. Ben Shelton can play big on the grass. Some player, some people are saying he's fraudulent because of his kind of very peachy draw at the Australian Open to get him to the quarterfinals, but we will see. I love when play, people say fraudulent tennis players. It's so funny because it's like that's how serious we take this. It's like ridiculous. Medvedev to play Arturo Ferry, Manorino Shevchenkovo. Shev Shevchenko, sorry, Alexander. Um, Fuchovic in there versus Griekspur. Griekspur. I'm looking at other good matches in here. 
Not too many other ones. Andy Murray in this quarter versus Ryan Penniston. Britain's own. Can Andy Murray beat Penniston? Of course he can. Can Andy Murray beat Sitsipas? I would honestly expect him to at this point. So sneaky dark horse in this quarter is definitely going to be Mr. Andy Murray. Sir Andy Murray, two-time Wimbledon champion. Uh, yeah. Also, Milos Raonic. Let's go. Out of Canada. Friend of the show. The original friend of the show. He could be a dark horse as well. He's going to smash Dennis Novak, I think. Tommy, That's going to be a tough match for Tommy Paul. Both of my guys. Anyways, next quarter. Sinners. No, sorry. Casper Rude's corner. That's kind of laughable. Casper uh, Rude's uh, lead up to the grass season obviously included being at the lake uh, at concerts. Hanging out, playing on clay at his club back in Norway. So just you know, just just a pretty legendary lead into the grass swing, if you ask me. Um, center to play one man while Sarundalo first. That's you know not easy. Schwartzman's in there. Catch Manovic. Both those guys are struggling with their form. Dan Evans is hanging on to ranking to his seating. Um, who else is interesting in here? We got yeah, Taylor Fritz, Borna Choric, uh, Bautista Agu, Shapovalov. You know, pretty also talent based. You know, and this is wide open in my opinion. Well, I mean, Sinner's Sinner should come out of this this quarter. If, but I mean, should he? That's Taylor Fritz, and Sinner will play in the fourth round, probably, hopefully. So, in reality, one. So they were my you know picks to get to the semifinals on the bottom half. So only one of them will make the quarterfinal, which is that's a crazy draw if you think about it. That's a crazy draw. So. That's a crazy draw. That's what I got to say about that. So, yeah, Dark Horse to come out of this uh, this uh, quarter. You know what? I'm going to say Denis Shapovalov because nobody believes in him. He's, I don't think he even believes in himself. But he has made the semifinal of Wimbledon before. If he can just play smart, he can definitely beat anyone in this quarter. But he's got to come through Radu Albert, which should not be an issue in the first round. Then he's got... Lloyd Harris, who's kind of been his arch nemesis, though he though he did just beat Lloyd Harris, so that's that's gonna be interesting. Let's go to the last to the Novak Djokovic quarter. Rublev is his is the highest seed in that quarter. We got Nicholas Kyrgios, we've got Felix Auger Aliassime, we've got Lorenzo Musetti, we've got Herb Uber Urkach. So there is a lot of talent in here. Like I said, Urkach or Musetti could get dangerous for Djokovic in the fourth round. But let's just be honest here. Let's just be honest. So the dark horse, I guess, is is it a dark horse? Is Nick Kyrgios a dark horse? Probably not. But I'm going to say my, my dark horse is Hubert Hurkacz, who has slipped 17th in the world, hasn't been playing his best. And uh, he can be very good on the grass. We all know this. We know this, don't we? So that's a very in-depth look at the men's draw. Slightly favor- favorable draw for Djokovic, but... What else, you know doesn't really matter. Like, let's be honest, it doesn't matter. Somebody's gonna have to play their absolute best, but it does matter, I think, because he's not playing Alcaraz in the semifinals. It's easier to be, beat Djokovic anywhere but the finals. We've we've seen that obviously so many times over the years. It's you want to play if you're gonna play him, you'd rather play him earlier, I think. Um, so yeah, we we will see. I'm looking at the fourth round there for him with Urkacz, but I'm really looking at the quarterfinals. Who's gonna play Djokovic in the quarterfinals? That will be interesting. So prediction time. Who's going to win Wimbledon on the men's side? Novak Djokovic will win Wimbledon for the eighth time to get his 24th major to get the calendar year Grand Slam race going fever pitch. Because I really don't believe anyone can stop him at Wimbledon with the lack of grass court in the in the calendar. His experience versus the entire field is he has way more results on grass at Wimbledon than the entire rest of the field combined. Just think about that. Just think about that for a second. He's got seven titles. Andy Murray's got two. That's it for Wimbledon titles in the draw this year. Nadal's not here. Obviously, Federer's retired. So, yeah, he's a clear favorite, obviously. Let's go to the women's draw. Now, I failed to upload pictures here because I'm a goofball, but this is what I'm talking about. Svantec, Rybaikina, Sabalenka, just the absolute three queens of the court. And and really, 
how do you pick between them as the favorite? I know if you're looking at it, Sviantek has done pretty well in Berlin. She pulled out of her semifinal match to not overdo it, to be ready for uh, Wimbledon. So she is playing better than Rybikina, who lost there, and uh, Sabalenka, who lost there as well. So is she the slight favorite? The odds say so, but let's take a look at the draw full-time right here. Where is this? Okay, let's do it. We're going to go to the top, and we're going to zoom in here for y'all. First quarter, the Iga Sviantek quarter. We're so used to saying that. She's got Coco Goff in her group. In her quarter, the seventh seed. That's great. That's interesting. I feel like that's always the case. Her and Coco Goff are in the same quarter recently, every single tournament. We got Venus Williams in there. We got Alina Svitolina. We've got Azarenka. We've got Mertens, Katsikina, Bencic. Wow. Very talent heavy top quarter there. Obviously, Iga Sviantek is the favorite to come out of it, but yeah, Sophia Kennan in there. Dark Horse. I don't know if it's a dark horse, but Azarenka can play great on the grass, I think. Bencic can be really, really dangerous with her uh, with her flat er power. So that's a good quarter. The Sviantek quarter. And then we get the Pegula quarter. Fourth seed. She's got Caroline Garcia as the fifth seed, who's dangerous on grass. We know this. The grass is really where Caroline Garcia's uh, ranking shot up last year with her results. Uh, we got Donna Vekic, who's had a great little swing here. Samsonova, still dangerous. Kinwen Zheng in there. Annette Contivate is in the draw. But I thought she retired. What is going on there? Annette Contivate is in the draw, but I think she's actually retired. So she's probably going to get replaced. Maybe that's a mistake. Uh, she might get replaced by a lucky loser, but I'm not sure why that's the case. On Shabur's, or sorry, Alina Rubikina's quarter with On Shabur in it. Potential meeting of the last year's final uh, in the quarterfinal there. Um, Bianca Andrescu, friend of the show, in there playing Bondar from Hungary in the first round. Then Cal potentially Kalinina in the second round, then Jabur in the third round, then Kvitova in the fourth round. Okay. I like that for Bianca. I don't hate that. On Jabur there, Petra Kvitova. Everyone's talking about her chances here. Such a good player on grass. Petra Kvitova just won. If I am, she pulled out of Eastbourne, she just won Berlin. Beating Donna Vekic in the final, beating Caroline Garcia along the way, beating Pliskova, Car Carolina Pliskova, and Alexandrova. So, yeah, Petra Kvitova on the grass is nasty. So, you're going to want to watch out for her. She's in there. She's my dark horse to come to that, that quarter for sure, but she, she might have to play. She's probably, or she's got a good chance to play. Rebike in the quarterfinals there, which would be super interesting. Then in the last quarter, the Sabalenka quarter, we got Sabalenka as the strong favorite, in my opinion, to come out of there. We got Mira Andriva qualifier. Watch her. I think she's like 15 or something. Unbelievable player. Krajikova in there. Mukova in there. Um, nice ranking boost for Mukova after making, obviously, the French Open final, almost winning it. Let's be honest. Rebecca Marino, Canadian in there. So, yeah, that's a great quarter as well. Marta Kostiak versus Sakari in the first round. That's tough. Paula Bedosa used to be top seed. Now she's kind of falling out of relevance. So we'll see. Anyways, we'll see. That is a look at the women's draw. If I had to pick a prediction, I like Rebaikina. I still have a hard time seeing people beat her at Wimbledon with the confidence that she has. Will she have pressure? I don't know. She's not defending any points, which is ridiculous. Um, no one is. <laughs> Djokovic is not defending any points either, um, even though he won. So, you know what? I'm, really, I'm actually picking a repeat champions 
Djokovic and Rebaikina for the glory at Wimbledon. Um, yeah, I don't see anyone taking them off on this court this year. So those are my picks. That's a preview of the draw. That's a preview of Wimbledon 2023. Let me know your thoughts down below. Of course, as always, thanks for being here, watching all the way through to the legends. Subscribe, please. That helps us like this video and then click the links below and check out the offers from our amazing sponsors. Thank you, guys. We will see you when the action gets started for daily coverage here on the channel. See you guys soon.